Welcome back to Forever Young. My name is Eric Johnson, and this is Shante Davy joining me here today. We're at the Halfa on Henry Street, and we are going to um, talk about, uh, in this segment, we're going to talk about uh, eating healthy on a budget, which is what all our segments are about, but we're actually going to get into some of the details, uh, shopping and meal preparation. And in order to eat healthy on a budget, you do have to do some planning, and it's going to take a little bit more um, uh, work in the kitchen. We suggest that you first go to uh, the farmer's market or go to the produce department at, at, at the store. This, this is a way, like, you know, this is a way chefs uh, figure out meal planning and people that eat very healthy, they go out and they find out what's available, what's in season, what's locally available. And see and what's then, on special. See what's on special. Yeah. yeah, even if you just shop at the regular supermarket, you can see, you know, every usually every week they have specials. You know, it'll be cabbage on special, it'll be squash on special. Uh, there's usually, you know, a lot of times there's carrots or Brussels sprouts or there'll be asparagus, whatever, whatever's, whatever's available and whatever. And that, that's a great way of saving the cost because if you, if you don't buy... You know, if you don't buy asparagus, if you buy asparagus out of season, asparagus can be, you know, $10 a pound. But if you buy it in season, work your meal that way, then you can have really healthy foods, uh, usually lo more local, more in season. And then you're getting better tasting food and it's a lot less expensive. So let's say you go to the market and they have lots of, um, you know, they have lots of healthy greens or they have... Um, you know, if you in, in, in the spring, we'll have more more salad greens, more of the early vegetables start to come on, and then you can you can plan a meal around that. Or uh, even if you go to the supermarket, you can you'll start to see uh, the more spring, the more like the lettuces and and um, and of course lettuce. We're lucky lettuce is available all year round now, but um, it'll start being on sale more. You know, for for, for each season, like if the spring is coming now. What were some of the early crops? You got lettuces, yeah. obviously, and asparagus. Spinach. Asparagus, um, it's an early crop, right? And you know, I, I I plan my meal. What I do is I never I try never to leave the produce department. <laughs> if you can only no you've never leave the produce department, you really end right, up with a know, healthy right. diet. <laughs> right, incredibly healthy. Um, but uh, you know, just start with the special, see what's on special, get those things, and then walk around and see what would be good to it. Like for example, with the asparagus, you could uh, they they often have uh, bro uh, organic broccoli on sale. Get asparagus, broccoli, and maybe some zucchini, onion, a little mushroom. Make a big stir fry. Make it for more than a day, and then you you can heat it up the next couple days. Now, don't overcook it. Just till those vegetables lose their crunch, and um, and serve it up. And here's another tip: instead of using um, cream uh, sauces and stuff that are expensive and fattening, use a lot of different seasonings and spices to give it a kick and to give it some more flavor. Use some healthy flats, uh, fats like. Um, Coconut oil is a very nice, healthy fat that uh, really uh, gives it some richness. And uh, cook it in coconut oil and make that uh, stir fry, and you have two or three days of food there. You can intermix it with mm -hmm. salads in between. Um, so you have like a base, you have like a main entree, and then you can just sort of fill it around that. And another strategy is to buy in bulk. You know, here at the Health Hut, they have a lot of different grains in bulk and seeds, and um, you know. Yeah, you can. I mean, we got. Um, there's, there's, you, you really need to get several good healthy cookbooks too. So if you don't know how to cook right, and you don't, you don't have a firm sense. You need like a basic. You need, you need several good uh, healthy. There's several light and healthy cookbooks out there that give you a lot of good tips on how to how to build a hearty meal around, you know, around uh, vegetables and, and whole grains. Like the other morning, I made a, I, I soaked brown rice overnight, and I used, um, I used actually some. Um, I use some uh, uh, collard greens, and I use some uh, bean sprouts, and I chopped um, broccoli, and I made like a fried rice in the morning. So I actually took um, I took a couple tablespoons of olive oil, and I made I, I cooked three um, uh, th three scrambled eggs, and I, I set that aside in, in a large uh, large uh, nonstick. I, I did have a nonstick fry, although we don't really recommend nonstick frying pans. But for eggs, it's very hard. Unless you don't overheat the pan, just keep it on a low temperature. And you set that aside. You cook your rice separately in a rice cooker. It's just, this meal is really easy to do. Um, and then you just throw in a couple more tablespoons of olive oil, even one tablespoon of olive oil in a nonstick pan. Uh, you can saute your vegetables. 
and then you sort of mix it all together and then you throw in some sesame, toasted sesame oil and a little bit of um, uh, soy sauce and um, you just simply mix that together and with the rice you've got a really hearty meal that lasts, you can have that for brunch and that'll last, that can be like two of your meals. And it's, um, it's inexpensive to make. You use up a lot of vegetables in, in, in the refrigerator. You know, you, they're start, maybe starting to go bad. You just sort of chop them up and slice them up and use those. And you can even add carrot. You can add almost anything. But like, for example, that makes a great hearty breakfast because you got your brown rice. you got a little bit of protein from the eggs. And um, you can, you know, for just in, in 10 minutes, you can make a, you know, a big, a big uh, pan of food for, you know, five, six people just with um, you know, uh, three, four cups of cooked rice. If you've got a nice, uh, good cooking pan, you can you just stir that all up and it's just add your seasonings. What other bulk foods would, that can help save the money do you have here? Uh, we have lots of, you know, your, your all different types of beans. A lot of people, they don't, they, don't, they don't realize how many different types of beans. Like we have cranberry beans here. We have- uh, Black beans. We have black beans, which are very it's versatile. Zuki beans. It's zuki beans. It, that's a very healthy bean for a lot of people. We also have a lot of beans for sprouting. If you can learn how to do sprouts, like I, I bought the sprouts that I made the um, the stir fry with, because you add the sprouts when you make a stir fry. The sprouts you add the last minute before you stir the whole thing for the final time, and it just wilts the sprouts a little bit. But learning how to make sprouts is is one of those things where it's very inexpensive. For ten dollars worth of sprouting materials, you can make you can make uh, five hundred dollars worth of sprouts for ten dollars of uh, with a jar. Um, and, and you can get three or four different bags of sprouting uh, beans and seeds. You can, you can literally make $500 worth of sprouts at retail price. And you can make them organic, and you can make them as you need them, too, when you make them at home. We really should do a show on sprouting, where we actually show the sprouting at the different levels, the different segments. But... Um, Let's see. So you can, you know, the other strategy, and if you, is people always say plan your meals and make a shopping list. And unless you know what's on sale and stuff, it's harder to do that. But I kind of do it as I'm going through the produce department. Once I see what's on special, then I go around and sort of plan my weekly meal around mm-hmm. that. I'll even in the in the grocery cart, I'll have that asparagus that was on sale sitting there. Then oh, I'm going to make a stir fry with these, and then next week we'll have, next, on Wednesday we'll have a green beans and a salad and stuff like that so you can kind of make your shopping list meal plan right in the cart if you wait to see what's on sale Um, and uh, your your bulk food is a really good uh, uh, money saver Um, and also all the transitional foods I wanted to talk about sure you know um, people what would who, be a transitional food? Well, people who, have, who are really into meat are going to balk at this. And if you don't want to just go to a, a, a grain and vegetable diet, there are meat substitutes. And there are, uh, Eric carries a lot of them here at the Health Hut. And, um, say, They're available in a lot of stores. Now yeah, yeah Myers has them. Um, the, the only thing that I would say is, uh, you know, soy, soy-based meat, uh, meat substitutes can be a little iffy because soy... Soy really shouldn't be eaten except for in its fermented form. Um, or in very, or in small, very, very small, small amounts. amounts. Yeah, just yeah. like meat. So think of a soy meat product like a meat product. You don't want to you don't want to have an excess of it. But uh, there are other uh, meat products, meat substitutes that are not soy based. So you know. And with soy, you really got to make sure it's not genetically modified. Yeah. So yeah. get organic. If you that means organic. If, if, if anything. It either has to say not, non-GMO or have to say organic. Yeah, Otherwise, to, you can almost be certain that it's genetically yeah, modified. 90, 92 or ninety five percent of the soy in the U S. is all. And there's several modified. studies shows that animals fed or uh, genetically modified grain have weaker immune systems. They have, tend to have more neurological problems. They tend to have more, uh, um, you know, um, um, what, 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 they tend to have chromosomal problems. Um, it just, it's really, really a bad choice. Yeah. And I hate to see our country going in this direction, but it's hopefully we can, we can slow this and stop it and start to reverse it. So if you have a family member who just loves those meat, try some of the meat substitutes because some of them are just really fantastic. Gardein has one that's a, it looks just like a piece of meat when it's cooking. It's, it really mm-hmm. looks like a piece of beef and it tastes pretty good too. But those are soy. You still wouldn't want to have an excess of those. It's very, but they're, they're delicious. And um, I think yeah. tofu, even, even tofu a couple times a month, I think is fine. Yeah. Uh, but we, yeah. We, we carry here, we carry a organic uh, sprouted tofu. Um, that's great in stir fries. It's great in. Um, you can use it in casseroles. You can just sort of 
you sort of saute it on, you just cut it into strips or into, um, into flat, um, uh, even like flat, um, you yeah, know. little bacon slices. Yeah, little bacon okay. slices, or I've even just sliced it, just slice it like you would a meatloaf and, and just fry it on, just let fry it lightly in olive oil or coconut oil. Oh, another, another one that is, that is soy-based but that is fermented is tempeh. Tempeh is a really good meat substitute. Yeah. You can get it in little blocks that you can cut into cubes for stir-fry. He has a bunch of them that are um, like bacon, like little strips that you can put in wraps. Um, you can fry it like bacon. He has a maple-flavored one that t- kind of tastes like that gives like you bacon. all the benefits of soy. It gives you all the, um, the health benefits of soy because it's fermented. You don't get the downside of soy. Right. You don't get the estrogens the, and stuff yeah, like the, that. Androgen- or the and, estrogenic type uh, problems yeah. with soy. And if you a high soy diet... Um, it really is not a good choice. I, for men, I don't recommend more than, say, one serving of soy every other day. Uh, for women, at the most, maybe one small serving a day. Preferably, um, preferably fermented, fermented whenever possible. Yeah. Uh, but if it's not, then you really need to limit it. Yeah, I would say even, for me, I, I would say even once, once a week or so on a non-fermented yeah. soy. I wouldn't go And if you have thyroid that. problems, then probably not at all. Yeah, if it, you, it if affects you, your thyroid. You don't it want really that. can inhibit the thyroid. Um, I want to mention too that we really people need to focus on seasoning with herbs and spices the food rather than rather than lots of high salt fat and, and sugar types of things use lots of uh, lots of herbs and spices and I know I know like fresh herbs is, is the most ideal but you really need to get if, if you're going to grow anything in your garden something that could really save on money it would be to grow uh, herbs and spices yeah. Do you agree? just look at the pace, price of basil and you can grow basil all winter long in in a, in a wind in a windowsill or just have a little herb garden out in front of your house or a little pot of herbs out in front of your house they even ha- come all uh, seeded together for you you can get them at the, the garden centers and stuff now so that'll save you a lot and it really adds ni- when you have fresh herbs like that it really adds a nice flavor to it and it adds more nutrients because they're live so you know that's it something just that, your food just pops it just yeah. it's just completely different and someone a lot of people don't have a lot of cooking skills you know so come into the health hut ask questions um you know ask friends that are eating a healthier diet uh, someone suggested having an eating healthy potluck where you know everyone brings a dish that that's you know focused on a more healthy diet and then discuss what you've done um, but, you know, online there are a lot of resources for that. There's a lot of recipes. There's a lot of raw recipes online. Raw, really, uh, eating a lot of raw on processed food is one of the ways that you can bring the most um, nutrients into your diet. And the enzymes to digest those nutrients are already in the raw foods. They're not killed off by the heat. That's one of the things that's killed off first is the enzymes. And that helps you digest it. You have a limited number of enzymes in your body that decreases over a time with age and so you want to have as much food the older you get that already has the enzymes in it so raw fruits Absolutely. and vegetables are your best choices for health for for most for most of your meals they've got to be centered usually around vegetables yeah and if they're not you know you're you're off base yeah and i know people say well vegetables are expensive you know in 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 the long run they're actually the cheapest thing you can you can buy because you know, yes, it's you know you can get you can buy a, a two pound bag of cheese puffs for what it costs to buy. You know, sometimes out of season, and I German don't buy it out of season. But I've seen like a package of zucchini that costs four dollars, but I can buy a three pound bag of cheese puffs. But it's you know it's not it's it's not a good value. If you get sick and and you become disabled and. You know, and and your yeah, the health costs and the, the health life. costs alone, and the loss of energy in your daily life too. When you're when you're eating a lot of processed foods, and so I think that we're about ready with uh, done with this section. In our next segment, we're going to be talking about some strategies for kids um, and some adding raw desserts to your diet. So we'll see you in a minute. 